chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. When you've discovered it, you've discovered it, you will find these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I want to ask the question this morning, why preach? Why preach? There ought to be a reason for everything we do. We ought to have a reason for why we go to church. There ought to be a reason why we work. There ought to be a reason why we preach. We ought to be able to answer the question why we worship God. Why we spend our time reading our Bibles. Yes, sir. We ought to be able to answer the question why we treat other folk right. Mm -hmm. right. We ought to be able to answer this question this morning, why preach? Mm -hmm. The year was 1992, February 9, 1992, at the Holman Street Church in Third Ward, Houston, Texas. Pastor Manson Johnson, after he had preached and delivered his message, after he had opened the doors of the church and people came walking down the aisle, he said to the congregation in the 7 a.m. service, and he said the same thing in the 11 a.m. service, he said to them that our church is impregnated once again. Our church is impregnated with sons in the ministry. He said to the church, he said that I want those two sons to come on down because the church has been impregnated with men who have answered the call of God. He said, first of all, I want Frederick Lyons to come down and, and accept his calling. And we, he went down, he accepted his calling, he pulled 
uh, up to the podium for the first time as a preacher and he thanked the congregation for, for all they had done for him. And then he said, I want Matthew Davis to come down. And this is our second son and they come as twins in the ministry. And they both have been called to preach. I gripped the podium with a, a death grip. Uh -huh. Looking at some 700 people standing out there. All right. Finally realizing beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am there to speak for God Amen. to the people. Yes, sir. I said to the people, thank you so much for allowing me to, to represent God to you. And thank you for accepting me at the Homer Street Church to, to preach the gospel. And then I said to them, pray for me. All right. Because I need your prayers because this is not a call to be a theme speaker. This is not a call to usher on the floor. I understand that this is not a call to be a deacon anymore. But this call is to step out into the deep waters and share the good news of Jesus Christ yes, to a, a fleeing world, to a world that's full of sin, a world that is, is hurting, and a world that is falling into torment. Mm -hmm. Thank you for accepting me, and I ask you to pray for me. All right. That was the most honoring moment of my time, uh -huh. when God would choose me that was not deserving to be chosen. God has chosen me 26 years ago to carry his precious word. It was my call to ministry. From that day forward, I never looked back. Prior to that day, I never wanted to preach. I didn't want to be a preacher because of three reasons. Number one, I didn't want to preach because I didn't like the pedestal that the people put the preacher on. Secondly, I didn't like the pedestal that the people uh, put him. Secondly, I didn't like the pedestal that the preacher put himself on. And thirdly, I didn't want to preach because I knew the moment I accepted my calling that, that God would allow the devil to tempt me and God will allow the devil to do what the devil do, does for those of us who are called to this gospel ministry. Yeah. But through it all, some 26 years to the date almost, God has protected me in ministry. He has stood for me and stood with me. And now we find ourselves in Luke chapter 4 where Jesus is talking. And I realize that if Jesus was called to ministry, if Jesus was called to preach this gospel, then we ought to do it like he did. Preaching is communicating the word of God. Through spoken communication with a view to persuasion. Preaching is not like lecturing. Preaching is communicating the word of God. Spoken communication with a view to persuade. When we preach, we don't preach for show or fanfare. We don't preach one way to numbers and one way to less than numbers. When we preach, we preach to honor God. And we preach to, to be of God's use. When we look at the text, we find Jesus making a statement as he's being rejected in his hometown. You know, a prophet is not welcome. A prophet is not respected in his hometown, Jesus would say. But he went on to say in verse number 18 that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yes, sir. This word spirit is pneuma in the Greek. Pneuma means the breath, mm -hmm. the breeze, God's spirit, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Christ, the blast of air. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the spirit of God or he is God's spirit. And it is coming from the same word we get the word wind. You see when I take my car to the shop and the man takes the liver and, and, and you hear air exploding and it lifts the car up 
It's because of the wind. When we walk outside today, it's a little bit chillier than, than normal during this time. And just a little bit chillier. And every now and then, it will get even colder when we feel the wind. You see, the Holy Spirit is, is the wind. He is God's too. He is the third person of the triune God. He is God himself. And Jesus says, as I said to you this morning, the Spirit of God, the wind, the breath of God is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Amen. He has anointed me. He has anointed me. And when you, you look at the word anointed, when you look at the word anointed, you need to understand that one has been consecrated. One has been set aside. One has been smeared and rubbed, similar to the smearing and the rubbing of the oil that God has for all of us. Yes, sir. All of us are called to something, but some of us are called to preach the word. Yes. And as we are called to something, we ought to always do that which we are called to do. Yes. If you are called to usher, you ought to usher with a smile. If you're called to greet people, you ought to greet them with enthusiasm. If you're called to, to minister by way of media, you ought to do it with haphazard, not in a haphazard way, but you ought to do it with perfection. Because our media ministry allows us to get the word out and praise God, praise God, praise God that we're able to get the word out overseas and the word out locally because of our media ministry. Therefore, we must do it with enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Must do it with preciseness and perfection. Mm -hmm. Such it is with the word of God. When we are teaching and when we are preaching, we must do it with excitement. Mm -hmm. We must do it with enthusiasm. Yeah. We must do it with affection and with passion. Yes. Because the spirit of the Lord has, has unctioned us. The spirit of the Lord has breathed upon us. The spirit of the almighty God has, has blessed us. The thing about it is God takes nobodies and make them somebody. The church, the church and the anointing of God is the only place we can find a bunch of has-been that are no longer has-been. It's because God has a place for all of us in ministry. The preaching of the gospel should not be taken lightly. You can't you can't just get up in the morning and do your, or late at night and do your Saturday night special and show up on Sunday morning. You have to make sure that you saturate yourself in the word of God. God has anointed you. God has appointed you. This word anointed means to be smeared upon. This word anointed means to be set aside, to be consecrated for the religious service that God has called you into. I'm thankful to God. That he would take me in spite of me. In spite of my rough edges. In spite of what I've been through. In spite of what I've done. God has blessed me and called me to this gospel ministry. It ought not be taken lightly because it's a call by the almighty God. It is a call by the God who is the supreme one. This word Lord means he is supreme in authority. He is the one who makes the difference. He is the sovereign God. He is the master. He is the controller of our very being. He is the emperor and the ruler. He is God all by himself. He wasn't voted in as God. He wasn't made God. He wasn't created as God. He always is God. He always will be God. And he's always going to be God. Always has been God. Nobody made him God. He is just God. It's that God that has called us. That's why, that's why we can't just take it any kind of way. It's, it's God who has called us to, to preach the word, to preach the gospel. This word preach means to declare, to proclaim, to evangelize. In word, the phrase preach the gospel means to declare, to proclaim, to evangelize. The word of God, the good news in the glad times. Yeah, yeah. Let me just tell you, if anybody needs some good news, we need yeah. good news. Yeah. And if anybody going to give us good news, it ought to be the preacher who has good news. Yeah. Regardless of what your situation is, regardless of what you're going through, the preacher ought to have some good news. Yeah. 
regardless of what your life looks like, regardless of what your life has been, the preacher ought to have good news. Lord, deliver me from preachers that are always complaining about everything they go through. God ought to have some good news bound up in the preacher. If you can't have find good news at home, you ought to find it in the preacher. If you can't find good news on your job, you ought to find it in the preacher. The preacher has been called to deliver the word of God through spoken communication and with a view of persuasion. We're called to evangelize. We're called to tell people about the gospel good news of Jesus the Christ. We're called to groups of people. The first group, he says, we're called to the poor. You see, in biblical days, you had to pay to go to church. You had to pay to get in, in certain institutions. You had to pay. And even today, we have to pay to get in certain institutions. You need to understand that Jesus has come, and I have come to preach to the poor. Yeah, right. This word poor means the destitute of wealth. Those who are destitute of wealth. Those who have no wealth. Those who have no influence. And because we have, because we're poor, we have no influence. Because many times it takes money to have influence. But the fact is today is we need to understand that the gospel is made available to those who are not intellectually sound. Yeah, yeah. The gospel is made available to those who are not learned. Mm -hmm. The gospel of Jesus Christ is made available to those who are, are not in the right class or right social uh, status. It is the poor, those who are destitute and need help. Yeah. Well, if the gospel was only delivered delivered to those who who were those who who were at a point in their lives where where they had money, some of us would be gone now. Some of us wouldn't make it to heaven. Some of us wouldn't make it because we are poor. Let me tell you, the good news today is that because we are poor, we can still make it. Regardless of what goes on around us, regardless of what we have, we can still make it in. Hallelujah to the Lord. Regardless of where you are. Yeah. The word poor means beggars. Yeah. Those who are beggars can still have the gospel yeah. preached to them. Yeah. Those who are beggars can still have the gospel of Jesus Christ preached to them. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You can be a beggar on the street and still get to know Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. It says in the text that, that I was sent. The word sent means to be set apart, to be, to be put in and to be sent out. In other words, if we preach, we ought not preach just from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. There's much preaching to be done other than at the church. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, we ought to take pride in preaching where those flock that don't go to church. Yeah. We ought to take pride in going out, sharing the gospel, good news with people who don't flock the doors on Sunday morning. Yeah. We ought to tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. In our daily going, we ought to let folk know that Jesus is the way. Yeah. He's the, the truth man, and he is the life. Yes, he is. Being sent means to be on a mission, means to be ordered to depart. When we're called, when we are called to preach, we are not called to sit soaking sour. Yes. We're called to deliver the good news. Mm -hmm. We're called to go somewhere. We're called to leave point A and find ourselves in point B, C, and D. We are called to go somewhere. Yes. We're sent. We're sent. I didn't say we just went. I said we were sent. And we were sent by the awesome, the amazing God. And lo, God will be with you everywhere you go when you're called and you're sent. You can't do it on your own. It's not on your own power. It doesn't matter what great uh, conversation we have. It does not matter how anointed we are to speak. It does not matter how great orator we may be called. It, on, it is only matters when we are anointed and set aside and sent by Jesus Christ says that I'm sent to heal. Sent to heal. Word heal means to cure, to make whole, to set free from the errors of sin. See, this word healing is twofold. It is a physical healing, and it is a spiritual healing. Not to mention that it is also a mental healing. You can look at some folk today and tell they need healing. They need healing physically. They need healing mentally, and they need healing spiritually. It is the preaching of God's word that heals people and, and changes their minds and turns them around. 
That's why we ought to run to preaching. We ought to, we ought to support the preacher. We ought to always put up with the preacher because it is the preacher, the words of God, that allows us to be healed. He says then he, that, that I've been called, I've been sent. I've been sent for the broken heart, the bruise, the broken and shivers. The broken until they've been shattered, the, the crushed, and also the discouraged. We, we are called to preach in order that people will be encouraged, not discouraged. Right. We're called to let folk know that there's hope yes, Lord. in the midst of hopelessness. Yes. We're, we're called to let people know that when you get a pink slip, there is yet hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When your spouse walks out on you, the word of God says there's still hope. Yeah. When life is not what you you want it to be and you proclaim that it would be, you can name it and claim it all day long. Sooner or later, you're going to hit a bump in the road. Yeah, yeah. Something's going to go wrong in your life. Either in your body or out of your body. Something's going to go wrong in your life. You're going to be despondent. You're going to be broken hearted by something or somebody or all of the above. All right. It's the preaching of God's word that makes us different. That's why when I see people being stampeded in the club, and then I look on Sunday morning and I don't see a stampede going on to get in this building, it reminds me that people need preaching. Yes, sir. When I see men, women, boys, and girls walking up to people and shooting them at point blank range for no reason at all, I'm reminded that people need preaching. When I see young children disrespectful to their parents, I know without a shadow of a doubt that people need preaching. When I see parents who have to put locks on their bedroom doors because their children are on drugs and they don't trust them to come in, they think they will kill them overnight. They need preaching. It is the word of God, the preaching of the word of God that makes us whole. It says I'm called to preach deliverance. The word preach to proclaim, to communicate the word of God publicly, to publish it, to cry out aloud. Somebody may ask, preacher, why you got to raise your voice when you preach? Well, we ought to preach with passion. And we ought to preach with conviction. And we ought to preach because the word preach means to raise your voice, to cry out aloud, and to do it openly and in the public. Now, if you're called to teach, that's one thing. But if you're called to preach, you can sooner or later, it doesn't matter what your personality looks like, it doesn't matter what you're going through, it doesn't matter who you are, sooner or later you're going to have to raise your voice. Right. And when you raise your voice every now and then, you ought to raise it with compassion and with passion. Just because we're called to preach, we ought not beat folk up, but we ought to have passion and compassion when we preach. We're called to preach in order to release the, and deliver those who are caught up in bondage. The word deliverance means that we ought to set them free. Yeah, yeah. We ought to release them. We ought to deliver a sense of forgiveness to them. And if we deliver forgiveness unto them, Jesus said, as we forgive our debtors, yeah. he will forgive us our debtors. Because we need to make sure that we are there to deliver a pardon to them. Yeah. Word pardon is, is to set, set us free. The, the word pardon is to be delivered, to be in remission, and to be set free from bondage. We preach, I'm just trying to tell you why we preach. We preach to set the captives free. This word captive means those who are caught up in prison. They are the prisoners of war. They're not locked up anywhere. They're, they're not behind bars anywhere. But what they really, really are, they're locked up in their minds. They're locked up in their heart. They are prisoners of war. Yeah, right. They're still walking around like you and I are. But the devil, Satan himself, has bound them up and caught them as prisoners of war. Yeah, yeah. You can tell when folk are prisoners of war, it's because they talk like the enemy talk about their present situation. When they look at a glass and it's half full, they see it as half empty. 
It's when they, they get they go to the doctor and they're able to pay their bills and they complain about being able to pay the doctor bill. But those who are not prisoners of the war, they will thank God that I got the money to pay it. Because I know somebody who doesn't have the money to pay it. They complain about the president and what he's doing. Let me just park right here and let you know there are two groups of people who got the president at all. Those who voted for him and those who didn't vote at all. They got in there and now they are complaining about him. But don't you know the Bible teaches that, that God has a way of setting us free and, and delivering us even in the midst of the war and comes through preaching. How did he set us free? He set us free because he is able to put our minds on a high plane. Our minds ought to be caught up on a heavenly level. We can't talk. We can't can't talk down. If if we're prisoners of war, we talk down. We, we we can't we can't walk around with our head turned down on every little thing that happened. My suggestion to you, if it's bothering you like that, stop watching the news. Because every day you turn it on, it's gonna be something new. My suggestion to you is that if it's getting on your nerve like that, where where it, it creates a prison situation in your mind, and you wonder, what did he do today? What, what happened today? What did they do today? If it's getting to you that bad, then you need to stop turning the TV on. Because I got news for you. When you turn the television on, I mean the television on, he's going to give you bad news. But when it comes to preaching, the preaching ought to give you good news. Hallelujah to the Lamb. They're prisoners of the war. We're called to, 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 to recover sight to the bride. Meaning that we are called to restore the vision, the vision mentally, the vision, uh, the vision physically, and the vision spiritually. You see, for the blind, there's an opaque over their, their faces. They can't see clearly. They, they have a smoky image of what life is really all about. That's why you can't walk around and try to explain spiritual things to unspiritual people. When you try to explain, Paul says in 2 Corinthians, when you try to explain spiritual things to the natural man, you're just wasting your time. Your time. They will never understand it. They will never see it because it is spiritually discerned. And because it is spiritually discerned, guess what? They will never understand spiritual yeah. things. Yeah. All right. They don't have the intent. They don't have the right frequency. They don't know how to understand it because they are not spiritual. It doesn't matter how long they've been in church. It doesn't matter how long they've been baptized. It doesn't matter how long they've been walking in and out of the door. If they're not spiritual, they cannot understand spiritual things. Yes. Well, Don't waste your time. But the preacher has been called to set at liberty the bruised. Yes, liberty means to set them free. Liberty means to grant them freedom. Liberty means to give them hope and give them part. It is in the word of God. You see, sometimes the word of God will make Annie shout. Other times it will make Billy pout. It's the word of God. The word of God has been delivered to us, not just to make us happy. It's been delivered to us in order to rebuke us and straighten us out too. We need to understand that the word of God will set us free, even if it doesn't taste good. You see, the word of God sometimes seems like Castro. When it get around this time in the winter time, right around November, right after Thanksgiving, uh, some of y'all back in the country used to take castor. Right. And what they do is they, they make sure that you take it and you take it off. They went from a teaspoon to a tablespoon and they give it to you regularly. You see, because castor is good for you and it's good to you if you know what it's for. Look at how you're shaking your head. You said, no, it ain't ever good to me. But when you have the right mindset, you know you ought to take care of what's good for you, whether it's good to you or not. We are called to preach this word to those who are bruised, those who are crushed, those who are shattered, those who are, are shattered in pieces, and those who have been smited through it all. Verse number 19 declares to us that we ought to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yeah. The acceptable year of the Lord. This word acceptable year means the year of Jubilee. It was the year of Jubilee where, where all the debt had been canceled. 
It was the year. It comes every 50th year, and every 50th year, the, the landowners will have to return the land back to the original owner or back to the original owner children or his grandchildren. And the year of Jubilee would be a year where there would be a new beginning. It would be the year where they were, were set free all the slaves that were caught up in bondage. Let me tell you, I want to stop by and let you know now that we are in the year of Jubilee. It says, preach it if you're going to preach. Let the folk know that Jubilee is a happy time. Jubilee is a time where it's an acceptable time unto the Lord. It is a time when your debt has been canceled. This is the time when your debt has been canceled. You, uh, you have liberty now. You have freedom now. And you don't have to live like you've been living. All over 2,000 years ago, I tell you, Jesus of Christ took a tree and he marched up Calvary Hill. He died for you and he died for me on a stone hill called Calvary. He set us free that day. He set us free. He canceled the spiritual debt for us over 2,000 years ago. While we preach, we preach so men can be saved. We, we preach so men can be delivered. We preach so men don't do foolish stuff over and over again. And why do we preach? It's because Jesus paid the price for preaching over 2,000 years ago. He died on that skull hill that day. The S-U-N refused to shine that day. Uh, because the S-O-N was shining very clearly. He died that day until the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. It became midnight at midday. He died that day, I tell you. He died on a stone hill called Calvary. Yes, he did, for my freedom and for your freedom. He died. Why do we preach? We preach because men need to know that in his death, he delivered us from our sin. In his burial, he carried our sin far away. But he rose early that third day morning. He got up with all power. All power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up with all power. All power in heaven and earth in his hand. He delivered me. My life was messed up. My life was in shambles. But I thank God for Jesus. He got up that day, I tell you. He rose for me and he rose for you. Not only did he get up from the dead, he got up in my life one day. And he delivered me. He canceled my debt. I owed an awful debt. He canceled my debt that day. And I vow by all the day that I'm going to forever preach the word and tell a dying world about the Jesus who walks with us, who has delivered us. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you now. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the anointing of the sweet Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. We thank you for choosing us to tell a dying world that Jesus lives. We thank you, Lord, that the captain is set free. The blind is receiving their sight. We thank you, Lord, that hope is being renewed. Lives are being changed. Marriages are being saved. Singles are depending on you. We thank you, Lord, for spiritual deliverance. For giving us hope in a hopeless situation. We thank you, Lord, for walking with us through the storm. And Lord, if you don't deliver us from the, from the storm, be with us in the storm. And Lord, we glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you for who you are. Strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let's go. Amen. Thank God. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. I have to come to him. Don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. 
You need to trust Jesus to get it right. Don't wait till next Sunday. Next Sunday is not promised to us. But preaching is done just for this moment. God, come to Jesus. If you're here and you've never received Jesus as your Savior, it's a very simple process. Just believe the story that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a bar your life and make you a new person. And yes, he'll do it. He'll do it every time. Eternal God, thank you for these who are coming. Those who recognize you as their Savior. We ask you for deliverance. We ask you to mend the broken pieces. Bless in the name of Jesus. We believe that Jesus is Christ. We believe he died for our sins. We believe he rose from the dead. Now come into this person's life and make them brand new. In Jesus' name, my friend. Amen. Amen. If you're here today and you've never received Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. If you're without or between church homes, this is your moment. You wrestle with sin like all of us do. This is your moment. The door is open. Come to Jesus.